Hey guys, Cody with Double C Custom Leather here. Um, coming to you guys with a video today. We're gonna do something a little different. Um, we've been doing a lot of outside the waistband holsters because it's winter time, but um, here in Florida, where I live, um, a lot of people carry these little pocket guns, what we call pocket guns, little 380s, little, um, little 22s, 32s, things like that. Um, the 380 seems to be the most popular caliber um, around here. Um, this is a Smith & Wesson Bodyguard. Um, great little gun. I, I personally carry a Ruger LCP, um, and I do a lot of holsters for that. Um, so <clears throat> with it being a pocket gun, uh, you need a pocket holster. A um, little bit of a challenge as far as design goes here because um, you want a holster loose enough that the gun's not going to really retain, but you want it tight enough that it gives the gun something, you know, as protection in the pocket and it keeps stuff from getting caught in your trigger guard. You know, heaven forbid you stick a pin in your pocket and a pin goes through the trigger guard of the gun, like so, and you sit down and the gun pushes forward and the pin makes the gun go off in your pocket. You're going to end up with a shot off kneecap. So these are very important holsters. Um, uh, but the self-defense aspect of it, um, if you're carrying a, a pocket gun, when you pull your gun, you want the holster to stay in your pocket and the gun to come out. Now they make like sticky holsters and things like that. I've never really had any luck with them. Um, I designed something for the LCP that I carry on a regular basis, um, almost every single day. And it works great. Um, essentially it'll have two hooks on it, one at the top, one at the bottom. Um, and that'll hook the corner of your pants pocket, especially if you're wearing jeans or slacks or anything like that. It'll hook the corner of your pants pocket and the holster will stay and the gun will come out. Um, and we use really lightweight leather for this. Um, so without further ado, um, we'll get started on this holster. We'll try to make this video not too long, but it might get a little bit lengthy. So um, if you want to fast forward to the end, see what it looks like, and then come back and watch the video, by all means. As, uh, as always, I'll leave links to everything that I use in the description below. Um, my social media will be in the link, links below. And um, you guys make sure to uh, enjoy the video. All right, guys. So we're getting ready to start on this holster. Um, now I went ahead and traced the gun out um, just to save some time. I've also put a mark here for my site channel. Um, if you have any questions on some of this stuff, I'm going to move through it pretty quickly. Um, check out our template making video. I'll put a link in the top right corner of the, of the screen here. Um, so we got our sight channel marked out. Also here I have my uh, ejection port marked and my mag release button marked. Um, now the width, the overall width of the gun, I've got it noted here is three quarters. Okay. Um, half of three quarters, which is what we're going to give ourselves from where we marked our sight channel and then from the from the trigger uh, end of the gun is gonna be 3 eighths. But because this is a pocket holster, we're gonna give ourselves another eighth of an inch, which would equal 4 eighths, right? And if, if we remember how to do our fractions, 4 eighths converts to half of an inch. So this is, this is our, our measurement here, what we're gonna give ourselves on both sides for our stitch lines. That way, um, we have a, a holster that's loose enough that the gun, when, when you draw the gun, the holster will stay in the pocket. So from there, we measure out half of an inch here. And we're measuring from our sight channel where we want, where we want our sight channel to be. We'll make a line. That's gonna be our top end stitch line. And from here, we'll measure out half of an inch on the bottom where the barrel would be. And then half of an inch all the way around the trigger guard. And just to save some time, I'm going to kind of mark this out. I can kind of eyeball it. If you're not good at eyeballing, go ahead and measure all the way around. top now remember this space here I'm gonna put this mark here because we need to have some room to stick our fingers in between the holster leather and the uh, and the firearm grip itself okay so always double check looking back everything looks good now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start drawing this is where you want to break out your pencil we're gonna start drawing our shape 
what we want. I'm not going to talk much through this. I'm just going to just going to draw. So that's the shape of our of our template. Um, that's what we've come up with so far. We might make a few changes, but I think that's that's pretty good right there. Um, the reason we put in the stiffener in the shape that it is is simply because I have to do an, uh, a tooling on this particular gun. The guy wants some initials on there, so we'll do them on the on the stiffener itself. Um, you got a hook back here. On the back side, you got plenty of room for your fingers. You got a hook here, catch the pocket. Now this might seem kind of wide, um, real estate wise, but you'll have to remember the holster is gonna have a bend to it, kind of a concave bend. Um, so that way it sits against the leg, uh, nice and nice and tight. Um, also you want a wide base because if not, your holster will flip around in the pocket and the gun won't be right side up. Um, also, um, you're gonna lose some space as we wet mold this around the gun to make it loose enough for this this draw to happen. So <clears throat> with that being said, we're gonna take our scratch off. We'll poke some holes through our cart or through our poster board here. Just so that way we can mark our stitch lines. Alright, get that cut out, trace it onto some leather, and um, that'll be it. Right, guys it's five to or um three to five ounce leather um probably more around the probably more around the four to five um ounce put our pattern on there all right and through the power of video editing um what we have guys is we've cut our stuff out I'm trying to keep this video a little bit shorter for you guys um got both sides cut out opposite sides be glued together like so um, and then we have our stiffener that's uh, also cut out now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, edge all the spots that we're not gonna have stitches right so our stitch line is here and here um, and we're gonna edge everything in between two stitch lines on both sides just on on both sides of the holster okay on inside and out now right here where our stiffener is we are not going to edge so we'll make a tiny little mark with pencil because we're going to edge the top portion of our stiffener when we get it glued on so we'll we'll go from here to over here and from here to here on both pieces and then we're also going to edge the bottom portion of our stiffen. Because this is thinner leather guys we're using a number two edger here. Now, because this leather is a little thinner, I don't want to cut any of the leather away with a stitch groover, so I'm going to use wing dividers instead. And I'm going to mark out my stitch lines. I'll just scribe them in there. Alright guys, and that's done. 
Um, keep in mind, we have videos on how to do every process we're gonna show you guys in this video. So if you have any questions about the processes, check out some of our other videos and you should be able to clear up any of the questions you may have. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and stamp our initials in. I've got the initials kind of laid out how I want them. I put a slight curve to them. Um, I think that's gonna look really good. And uh, what we'll do is I've already scratched kind of a, a very faint line in just to kind of give me a guide to go by. Um, so we're gonna case our leather. I don't have any videos on tooling or anything like that. Um, I probably should do one that's for another day. Um, casing your leather basically means to wet it, for lack of a better term, and kind of let it sit for a second and get, get really absorbed. Um, the initials we're doing are DPL, um, so I have my three um, pre-made stamps there. And when you're doing this, just make sure you have your letters oriented correctly and I'm just gonna barely very lightly tap each one so that way I can I can kind of get an idea of how it how it lays out kind of give it my own little style. And as you can see, it's gonna sit on the holster just like that. All right guys, so we're ready to dye up this pocket holster. Um, as you can see, I've kind of actually already dripped some dye on there, um, but that's okay. It's the same color that we're gonna go with. We're doing a, um, a Five Inks uh, Pro Dye Saddle Tan. Um, if you watch my one of my last videos was on all my dyes and we did a color palette um, You'll see how this comes out. It's a, it's kind of a light brown got a little bit of reddish to it almost What you would think natural leather looks like after age. Um, it's a good color. So we're using a One inch wool dauber I'm just gonna load up my dauber here and we're gonna start dyeing This holster Always cap your dye as soon as you get done using it because if you spill dye, it can cause a lot of uh, a lot of issues for you. So we'll let that dry probably 12, 24 hours. We'll come back, we'll get this thing glued up, and start stitching, getting the holster put together. All right, so we've got our uh, our pocket holster dyed up. Um, as you can see, because we're using such lightweight leather, it's just kind of curled on me as it dried. Um, and you'll see how how nice the color came out, how how well it matches there. <clears throat> um, don't worry about that curling; you can address that at a later date. Now, the one thing we're going to address now before we glue this all up is the fact that this stiffener piece, when it goes in right here like this, we're not going to be able to address this edge. So we're gonna go ahead and dress that edge up now, burnish it, wax it, and all that stuff. So um, just keep in mind what edges you we can we can dress from here to here, from here to there, um, but we can't dress the bottom side. So we're gonna we're gonna try to do that now. Um, and the way we do our edges is we just use a little bit of gum tragicant. Uh, I'll put a link down below where you can find some of that. Um, this stuff just is what we use instead of water to wet our edge down. Um, and I feel like it gives me a little bit better of a, uh, of a result. And 
if you'll see how slick that edge has gotten. That's what you're looking for. Glassy, shiny, slick. And that's gonna give you the best appearance when you end up putting this thing up. Now, what you'll do next, I kinda usually give this a little bit of time to dry um, and set in there, but because we're doing this on film, we'll go ahead and do it. Uh, take yourself a thing of beeswax here. Um, if you have any local AB, Abiary, apiaries, I think is what they're called. People keep bees um, in your area. Go check that out and get some beeswax. Best to always shop local if you can. Uh, if not, I'll put a link below where you can find some beeswax. So we're just going to put a light coat of beeswax on that. And you can use canvas. Um, I use a piece of old uh, denim from some jeans that I cut up. And then you just rub that same concept here. You want to rub it fast enough and hard enough to create friction and warm that wax up. When you warm that wax up, it, uh, it will in return sink down in the fibers and glue everything together. It kind of acts as a binder. Also wax is naturally water repellent. So this is going to give your edge some good finishing as far as being a little bit more water resistant. A while your denim will get so waxed up that sometimes you won't even have to put wax on you can just and you hear I don't know if you can hear that that sound that's what you're looking for same sound that your feet make on a nice waxed floor and you'll see I have a little bit of a light spot right there so what I'm gonna do is just touch that spot up all good good to go All right, so now our edge is waxed. We're ready to go ahead and glue up. This is the position we're gonna glue up in. I take my scratch awl and I run it up underneath here, about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch inside. And that gives me a little scribe line that I know where I need to put my glue. I'm just gonna rough this up because this is the smooth side of the leather. Anytime you have the smooth side of the leather and you're gluing something, you wanna give the glue something to stick to so you kind of rough it up a little bit. Fully coat your back panel, and then put a light coat on your smooth side. Be careful not to get outside your lines, the stuff sticks to your project and it will ruin it if you don't get it off quick enough. So the way we do this is we wait about five minutes, um, let the glue start to set up um, is the term we use, and then we'll come back and glue it. All right, time for the glue up. We gave this glue some time to set up and do its thing. And you just wanna make sure you position this to where it makes it easy for you down the road and you don't have to do as much sanding or moving around once you stick this it's going to be pretty stuck so um and then you just press it in with your press it in with your fingers some people you'll see take a cobbler's hammer or one of these mounts and tap it in um it's not 100 percent necessary but it does help and we're going to come back and we're probably going to go ahead and stitch this up off camera um we'll, when we stitch the main body you'll get a lot more uh uh, footage of us stitching and, and a little bit more explanation there. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this off camera uh, and then we'll come back and we'll be ready to glue up the main body. All right, so we went ahead and put our glue on. We went ahead and stitched up off film. Um, there we stitched that stiffener on. Uh, we're going to stitch this whole body of this holster here in a, in a little bit so you'll get to see more of that. Um, we went ahead and applied our glue just like we did on our, uh, our last segment. Um, both sides let it set up. So we're gonna go ahead and get it glued up now. Um, key here is to match everything up now and that's gonna make a whole lot less work for you in the, at the end of your project. And just remember once you stick this, it's pretty well stuck. 
So if you have to pick the thing up and, and move things around, by all means do it. Just remember if you're, if you're cutting and you're, all that was sloppy, you're gonna, you're gonna know about it here. Um, and I tend to err on the side of sloppy pretty much. Um, anything that I do, I'm, I'm always in a hurry. Patience is definitely not a virtue of mine. So, <clears throat> but you'll see here, everything's pretty smooth. We'll, we'll touch that up with sander, um, touch these edges up, and then we'll, uh, we'll be ready to, to stitch. You see, I got a little bit of an overlap there. That's, that's probably just human error from my cutting. Um, but we'll go ahead and let this, let this glue cure and uh, we'll get it stitched up. All right, guys, I think we're ready to go ahead and start punching our holes for our stitches. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a, a two prong um, punch. If you guys need to um, buy one of these, this is actually used to be a four prong punch and I broke off the two side so now I use it as a two prong uh, if you need one of these I'll put a link in the description for one and we're just following if you remember we have some light scribe lines that we follow we didn't cut in our uh, stitch grooves so we're just following those and the reason I'm using the two is because because we don't have a stitch groove for this to set down in it's easier to get off the more prongs you have to get off your line so I'm just gonna take my time go through little by little All right, guys, so we've uh, go, gone ahead and I uh, saved you the trouble of having to watch me punch all those holes. Um, and we've got all our holes in for our, for our stitches. I'm gonna do something a little different than what I've done in the past. Every time I've stitched on video in the past, I've kind of showed how to stitch um, using a stitching pony. When in all reality, nine times out of 10, I don't use one. Um, I just hold the project and stitch and this being a smaller project. This is a perfect project to show you that on um, And we're just we're threading our needle now If you have any questions about how to thread a needle refer back to our saddle stitching uh, video so you go through the eye of the needle and then take the needle and, and Stick it through the thread and it creates a slip knot that will slip up and down like so but you want you want just a little bit that gives you something that it, it's not hard to pull that knot through if you were to tie your needle on you'd have a hard time pulling your knot through your holes I've never stitched anything other than a leather project I started stitching hand stitching when I started working with leather so I don't know if this is how you would normally thread a needle but essentially that's what you got your thread goes up through the eye of your needle and then your needle goes into the tail end of your thread. And then when you pull the needle through, it creates a knot that you can in return cinch down. So normally, like I said, I would put this on a, on a stitching pony and it, it would hold the project for me, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way just to show you guys another way of doing it. I typically do this sitting on the couch watching TV or watching football. Um, that way I'm not stuck back here in this cave all day long. So you're gonna go through your front hole, even up your threads on each side with one needle. This is a saddle stitch. Um, you have a needle on both sides. So go through the front with your front needle and through the back with your back needle, same hole. 
and what it looks like is that right there and then you just pull it tight pull it tight through the front create your loop through the back and pull it tight and when you pull tight you kind of want to pull your thread in an angle because those are diamond punches uh, they create a diamond shaped hole so you pull your thread in an angle kind of like so like that I'm gonna go a little faster here and show you guys real time how quickly we can do this when we're not when we don't have it in this in the saddle or the pony I mean This is something you can do if you get good at doing it without doing it in a stitching pony. Basically, it's something you can do anywhere. So you're going on a road trip, take some projects to stitch. Um, you're going, you know, you, you got to go sit at a tax collector's office or a doctor's office or something like that. Take you a project that you started stitching and finish it up while you're sitting there. Um, if you use a stitching pony the entire time, you kind of limit yourself that you're going to have to be strapped into that pony to do any kind of stitch work, which is not a, that's not a bad thing per se. Um, there's a lot of guys who that's how they've done it and they, that's the only way they do it. I just choose to be a little bit more versatile if I can. And you'll see what we've got started there. We got our stitch going. Um, we got a little bend in our stitch. We'll go back and fix that. Uh, and we're going to go around all the way around until we get back to this hole. All right, guys, so we've done stitching. Um, you'll see it, it came out, the stitches came out pretty nice. I really like the white against that, that saddle tan. Um, and this portion of my shop is where I do all of my, uh, my sanding. I just use a Dremel with a drum sander. It's about to get really loud, but I'll kind of try to show you guys how I do it. <laughs> leveled up our edges I might need to get right in here with a little sand and stick um, and what I use for that is one of my girlfriend's nail files um, it works pretty well all right guys so now that we've got the edges squared up we're gonna take our uh, our edger and go ahead and knock off the corners um, this is a number two edger Remember, we already we already edged the insides and outsides of the places where the holsters open, so you don't have to do that. You just match up your your edging. All right. Oh, whoops. So, well, we went ahead and um started doing that I was gonna say go ahead and put your your holster now this is thin leather so it does not take long I mean you can see it's already like super super pliable so that's really all it needs just a quick dunk um, and we'll let that sit for a second and we'll get to wet molding on this holster all right guys <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and put our put our gun in remember this is the time that if you're using a real gun you want to go ahead and safety check it wet mold with loaded guns it's a good way to get hurt so wooden dowel as always we're gonna slide that in there as a sight channel and you'll see that 
this holster is a little looser than what we're, we normally do when we're wet molding, but that's fine. It's gonna allow us to make a really nice pocket. So um, we're gonna just kind of take our fingers and rub around here and get the, get the wet molding process started. This shouldn't take much effort because of this leather being so thin. You'll see it's starting to look like a holster now, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it, I'm gonna adjust the camera here. And we're gonna put it in our press. And this is press I have, I've got other videos on it. Um, just some really high density foam. Close it up, it's a just a book press. And then we will Take our, sorry, I'm doing this one-handed here. Take our big clamps, clamp it down. We'll put another clamp on the other side. We'll leave it in there for an hour or two. When we pull it out, it will be almost wet molded for us. We'll just have to put in a few details. And that's the nice thing about this press is once you get it, once you get it in there, you can go work on something else while you're waiting. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we've given it a few, probably about an hour or two, which should be plenty of time, seeing as this leather is, is a thin leather. We're gonna go ahead and pop that. Watch your fingers when you do it, if you got a press at home. And, you see this this leather started to started to dry but we got a awesome looking little holster here and uh, you see there's a whole lot more definition than when we put it in we'll go ahead and get this camera set up on the tripod and uh, put some more put some more detail on it all right time to start the the fun part of the molding where you really get to see some of the uh, some of the details come out. Uh, we got a molding spoon we'll be using a little bit. Uh, we have one of these bone creasers here. Uh, we'll be using that. And then of course, everybody knows that's watched my, my wet molding videos, how much I like using my, my Sharpie. It's my favorite, favorite molding tool. So we're gonna mold that sight channel in, get the top half of the slide, get it good and molded in. And we'll kinda, just lightly, lightly outline the uh, the ejection port. Come around the bottom half of the front of the trigger guard, and then around the trigger guard here. Put some put some detail in there, and then we'll get the inside of the trigger guard. Remember, we don't want to create too much retention because this is a pocket holster we want there to be enough retention to retain the gun but we want the holster to come off so we're not going to get crazy with pressing in on that trigger guard um, and quite honestly I'm happy right there where it's at I'm gonna put in one little detail line right here for the slide just to give it this is really more or less just for aesthetic reasons Put that in right there. And then with the back, we're not gonna really put too much molding in there. Probably just gonna leave that as is. And remember, this thing's going in a pocket, so we wanna bend this around kind of in the shape of if you if you if you don't know what shape to put it, I always take it off my bench, put it on my leg like it would be in my pocket. And if it fits well around the leg, then you know you know you got it right. So that's gonna go in and we're just gonna pull this out and we'll check the, the retention. So it's it's got enough retention to retain the gun. We could probably add a little more here and there. And as you can see, it'll hold that blue gun 
um, upside down we can shake it it's not gonna fall out but it does pull right out pretty easily so that's right where I want it normally if we're doing a normal holster we'll squeeze this together a little bit but we're gonna give it a light little squeeze and then we're gonna let it be we'll let this dry we'll come back we'll address the edges put some uh, put some clear coat on it and it'll be done we'll be sending it out to the customer all right guys so i apologize i accidentally skipped a step the last little segment we saw was um us wet molding the holster um i thought i hit play or record on my my camera and i didn't um so i accidentally dyed these edges off camera i can't go back and do it again now so um essentially all you need to do is just dye it the same color as the holster body if you want to do a different color for some contrast that's cool too we do a lot of that in the shop um, now we're going to go ahead and burnish the edges. What I got here is some uh, gum trag. Uh, the full name is gum tragicanth. I honestly, I don't know what this is or why it works or the chemistry, the science, but it just does. Um, there's a lot of other products out there like it that I've tried, but this seems to work the best. It's made by EcoFlow. Uh, check the links in the description and I'll, I'll, put, I'll put a link for that down there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to apply a pretty liberal coat to the edge here. Um, it's not really a science i do this with my finger some guys do it with a dauber or a q-tip um i don't like to waste daubers or q-tips so I do it with my finger and then i wipe my finger off and nothing's wasted so make sure you get it up, up in all the little nooks and crannies and make sure you get the whole edge and you only want to do little segments of the edge at a time just because that's you can only get so much done this is a process that actually takes more time than what it seems like it should take, um, but the results are astounding. I keep a rag on my bench just to wipe my, my finger off so I don't have slippery fingers. And then you're gonna wanna use one of your, sorry about that noise, one of your burnishing tools here. Um, and you're just gonna pick the right channel for it and you're gonna burnish it. Now, you wanna get this thing moving fast enough that you're creating some friction because that friction is what sticks down the leather fibers on the edge. So we just move this thing back and forth, back and forth until and you can almost start to hear the leather kind of squeak. You can feel it slicking up um, through your hand and the tool. And uh, then you come back and hit any spots that may not have gotten hit with your groove. You guys see what happens here. It darkens the edge up. Um, it slicks it up. That's obviously not done yet. We're gonna put a little bit more gum trag on there. Kind of got a little dry on us. And essentially guys, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna smooth this thing out all the way around i'm not going to bore you guys with watching me do it the entire time and we'll come back and we'll get we'll get this thing waxed up all right so we've got our um our holster completely burnished all the way around um if you look at the edges i just want to show you guys how try to get the camera to focus how clean they look That's what they should look like, shiny, smooth. Um, and then they're only gonna get smoother from here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I, I usually use a, uh, a piece of beeswax. Uh, if you have a local person that sells honey in your area, you might be able to get some from them. Um, it's all natural. And then, uh, then a piece of denim. Um, this is just some old work jeans that I recycled. So um, you're just gonna wanna rub all the way around the holster with your beeswax. Put a pretty heavy coat on because um, some of it's going to get wiped off. We can start rubbing it in. So, <clears throat> waxing is done. You're going to take your take your thumb or index finger and wrap it up inside your inside your denim and you're just gonna rub it just like this and I rub until I can feel heat coming through the denim and I can feel heat in my finger when I feel heat in my finger I know that 
I've heated that up enough to get the wax penetrated in and get it smooth. And you can move around on your denim a little bit so you're not building up wax in one portion. All right, so that's that one little portion's waxed. You can see how shiny it is. And you can really, if you're doing this in your shop, you could really feel the difference um, in the smoothness and you can feel that wax on there. I'm gonna go ahead and finish waxing the rest of it just because I don't wanna bore you guys and, and put you guys through watching me wax this entire holster. We'll come back when it's time to finish the holster with our uh, Resoline. All right, guys, here we go. Um, this is the finishing step. It's always pretty excited, exciting for me when I get to this step because, you know, I love every step, but ultimately getting the holster to the customer or getting the holster to whoever I'm giving it to is what uh, what drives me to do the, the work that I do. Um, so I've had a couple questions on YouTube about what I use for a finish. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail here. Um, and actually, this finish is kind of gooping up on me. So, um, but it's still good. Uh, I use Resoline, it's made by Fibings. Uh, it's a neutral finish, it's an acrylic. And um, it, it seems to do the best as far as water repellent and, um, and protectiveness and things like that. Uh, it also doesn't change the color of the leather much. One thing I will say is it really, really stinks. So um, I try to not use too much of it. And, um, you know, I give it plenty of time to dry because when I hand it to the customer, um, believe it or not, a lot of people go and they sniff the leather. Um, they want that smell of leather. And that that smell will eventually kind of die off with the resoline. So um, I don't use straight resoline though. Straight resoline is kind of a blue color when you put it on. Um, and you'll see this kind of has a tinge of blue to it when we, when we apply it. I actually mix it half and half, so I'll fill my I'll fill my bottle up with uh, with half and half about water, and I just eyeball it, and then I shake it up each time before I use it, uh, and that that tends to give me a pretty good pretty good outcome. If I just use straight resoline, it gives me more of a uh, like a uh, I just don't like I don't like the way it looks. So when I go to do a holster. I always do the inside first. People, there's a lot of people out there who don't do anything on the inside of the holster. Um, they say that they don't want it to, you know, damage the gun or anything like that. I've used this on my own holsters and I carry every day. I've never seen any problems with uh, with using Resoline on the inside. So what we'll do is we'll go inside and we'll just give the inside one light coat. Make sure you don't miss any spots. You gotta think, especially this kind of holster, um, being in a pocket all day long, it's gonna get sweat, water, if the person's out in the rain, um, it's gonna get wet. So you wanna get every little piece protected that you can. Get a little bit, load my dauber up a little bit more. And I, make, I may make a, uh, a video here soon on resoline and um, how I mix it up and things like that and go into a little bit more detail with it. Um, if you want to see that or you want to see anything, leave me a, a comment down below and let me know what you want to see. I'll, I'll do my best to show it. So we're completely done on the inside. You'll see the inside of the holster is completely coated. There's a couple spots that we need to hit still. And I'm only using a little dauber on this, um, small dauber, small wool dauber, because this is a thin leather. I don't want to load my dauber up too much and oversaturate it. So this needs to go to the customer in a couple days. So um, I want it to have time to completely dry. Now on the outside, you want your dauber to be a little bit more dry. So, you know, rub it on the inside. Um, you don't want to put it on as thick as you put it on, on the inside. And you're just going to give it a, a light coat to start out with. Now this is acrylic. so. Essentially what that means is it puts a protective coating over top of the leather. It's just like the clear coat on your car. Um, it does not really seep into the leather per se. It probably does seep in a little bit, especially since I mix it half and half with water. But it will dry pretty quickly and it'll harden pretty quickly. Um, and just like when you're dying, you want big one directional strokes. 
And if you have any kind of stamping or tooling, make sure you get down in there. Once you got the front done, you can flip it over. Do the back. And you'll see kind of that blue tinge there. I loaded my dauber up a little more than I should have. Alright, there you have it guys. Um, that is your leather holster finished as soon as it dries. So we'll come back, take a look at this thing uh, one more time. Uh, and But until then, you're done. Um, let it dry, hang it up somewhere. Typically what I'll do is in my shop in here, I just hang it up on one of these hooks and boom, there you go. It's ready for whenever it gets dry. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and uh, hopefully if you take these skills that you learn to your shop, you'll be able to build just as good as quality a holster as, as this one came out to be. Um, I'll throw in some, some B-roll right here of uh, how the holster turned out. And if you wait till the end of the video, uh, there'll be some still shots of the holster. So you can see it up close and personal and look at all the little details. Um, also at the end of the video, there'll be a like and a subscribe button. Um, Make sure you click that. Uh, there'll be some other videos linked at the end. Uh, check out some other videos. Um, again, guys, if you need any of the tools or the products that we used in the shop today, I'll try to link most of them uh, down below. Those are affiliate links. They help the channel out. So uh, we appreciate you guys' uh, support there. And um, keep watching. We got some more videos coming up soon. Thanks.